Hi there, it's Gabrielle Nicolay from Speech Kids and Raising Orchid Kids, where we teach little kids to talk and help parents understand their little kids. And today we're talking to Dr. Kelly Pham. Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this conversation. We're going to be talking about concussions. Um, but first, tell the good people who you are and what you do. What kind of doctor are you? Yes. So I am a pediatric rehab doctor. And I like to describe that as the doctor of function. So I work with children with any sort of disability and also typically developing children who have injuries such as concussion or musculoskeletal type pain. Um, and so my goals are for children to be as functional as possible, or in the case of children who have limited functional abilities, ease of care and comfort, positioning, things like that are also very important goals for families. And we talk a lot in the disability world about ability. And so really working with families to kind of reframe disability into ability and encouraging children to do things that they enjoy, to find things that they're passionate about, mm. to be active and to participate in their lives. So that's sort of what I do and the kind of doctor that I am. I love it. Okay. So how, I'm going to back it up a little bit because in our first conversation, I asked you, how, how do people know whether they need a pediatric rehabilitation doctor, which you're actually more of a pediatric habilitation doctor. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. Um, how do people typically come to a, a specialty area like yours? Like what are, what right. are the diagnoses? Like what are the symptoms? How do we know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the primary population that I work with, just because it's the most common motor disability of childhood are children who have cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. um, but I work a lot with children who have brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, spina bifida, neuromuscular disorders, genetic disorders, neurodegenerative disorders, um, toe walking, concussion, amplified musculoskeletal pain, hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, POTS, positional orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So it sort of runs the gamut. And all of these things have one thing in common, which is that they're impacting a child's function. And so children oftentimes will make their way to me either in referral from a therapist that they've seen, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, or speech therapist, mm -hmm. or as a referral from their pediatrician. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it's apparent that there's something physical going on, neuro, neuromuscular, um, mm -hmm. right. Then we go to you. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that happens in can happen in childhood <laughs> and I'm having immense difficulty limiting this to concussion, by the way, because as soon as you <laughs> said so Ehlers downloads, I was like, oh, we got to do a whole episode on that. Oh yes. Because for a variety of reasons that we'll get into the next time we talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but one of the things that can happen in childhood is concussion, which is a form of traumatic brain injury. Yes. Yes. Okay. Technically a mild, uh, mild traumatic brain injury or mild TBI. Okay. Why should we not just stay home and take Tylenol and not worry about concussion? Right. That's a great question. And I think back in the day, we used to recommend, you know, you should stay at home, don't go to school, don't, um, you know, don't hang out with your friends, don't watch TV, don't be physically active, don't do anything. Um, but the recent research has actually shown that the sooner kids get back into activities and all activities, so that includes school, that includes physical activity, it includes, um, as far as school goes, cognitive activities, screen time, spending time with their friends. And the research actually shows that kids recover better and faster when they return to those activities sooner. Um, and so we no longer recommend the sit in a dark room for a week and then try to get back into things. And part of the reason why is that for a lot of kids, when you prevent them from doing these things, going to school, hanging out with their friends, being active, they get really depressed. They get really depressed. They get really anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of that can actually cause the symptoms to be prolonged and prevent them from recovering earlier on. Oh my gosh. You just blew my mind. Okay. But what about <laughs> um, tolerance for those activities? How do you manage, if you're saying like send them back as soon as possible, 
Right. But neurologically, they're not able to handle that. How does that work? Yeah, so accommodations are really important, especially in the school setting. Mm -hmm. And we generally recommend something called a sub-symptom threshold level of activity. So we want you to be active, but below the level where your symptoms are feeling worse. So if your symptoms are headaches, for example, and if you stare at a screen for 45 minutes doing homework, then you have a headache and you feel horrible and then you're you know, laying in bed for an hour. So what we want you to do is do that homework, but maybe do it for 30 minutes. Take a break. Take a break, give your brain a rest, and then come back to it to prevent the onset of symptoms. And the same goes for any type of activity, cognitive activity, screen activity, and physical activity. This is why you and I get along so well, because I'm taking that, what you just said, specific to concussion, and that actually applies across the human condition, which is, right, we want to have just enough, call it stress, uh, challenge, just enough challenge to, 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 um, to wring the meat out of the lesson, but not right. too much where brain is shutting off. Yeah. Brains do really well in that sweet spot. Um, uh, that it's that just right challenge. And we always come yeah. back to this just right challenge, but the trick right. is, and I think concussion clearly is one of these examples. The trick is what is the just right challenge and how do yeah. we find it? So how do you work with families to do that? Like what, what's, do you have like a log or I don't know, how does it work? Yeah. So it takes some trial and error and everybody is different in terms of how they sort of explore that and decide what works best for them and for their body. And for some people, it's writing it down. Um, For some people, it's just trial and error. Um, I would say for a lot of kids, many kids who have concussion um, and have ongoing symptoms are kids who are very high achieving. And Mm -hmm. so many of them really struggle with the stopping, taking a break, especially when it comes to school activities. So when kids are returning to school, If you need to take a break, you know, that means raising your hand in class and saying, or, you know, signaling to your teacher, I'm going to take a break, I'm going to walk out of the room, and this is what I need to do for my brain recovery, that is very challenging for a lot of kids to do, because they don't want to look different, they don't want to miss out on learning, um, and they don't want to get behind. Mm -hmm. And so those accommodations are really important, um, in addition to having parents who are good advocates for them, especially in the classroom, because you can't see concussion, right? You look at a child who has concussion and one might say, oh gosh, they look fine. They're fine. Um, And, you know, so a lot of children have difficulty, especially with that return to school Mm -hmm. and identifying when they need to take a break and remove themselves. So that oftentimes is a big challenge. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining it depends on the severity of the concussion, but how long does concussion recovery go on? Yeah, so typically kids recover within about three to four weeks. The majority of children who have concussion recover within that period of time. Mm -hmm. There are a certain percentage of children who have prolonged symptoms. Also, if you've had one concussion, you have a higher likelihood of having more concussions. Mm -hmm. The more concussions you've had, the more likely it is for your recovery to be prolonged. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on those things. And we did not... so. I'm 50 years old, right? My brothers, not me, but my brothers played sports. They had concussions um, and it was no big deal back in the day. And it strikes me that, you know, as much as sort of pendulum is switching from, okay, five days in a dark room to no, let's get you back to to activity at a subclinical, sub-symptomatic level. What's the, what's your sense for, um, what am I trying to ask you? What's the sense for the acceptance of concussion as an actual medical diagnosis in the world or in, in the spaces where kids who have them are operating? Right. I think that the awareness has increased and with increasing awareness has come increasing acceptance Mm -hmm. of it as a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And I really think that a lot of that has stemmed from what we call second impact syndrome, Hmm. which is when you've had a a first concussion, a first hit, 
you're still symptomatic, your brain has not yet recovered. If you go back to that activity, that sport that you're participating in, and you have a second hit to your brain, there is a much higher likelihood of you having actually a severe traumatic brain injury, Mm -hmm. which can sometimes be neurologically devastating. Mm -hmm. And I've seen those injuries. I've seen second impact syndrome Mm -hmm. um, and it is neurologically devastating. And I think now that we appreciate that that is a possibility, we want to therefore protect children and Mm -hmm. prevent Um, as much as we can, that from happening. And that's why now every single state in the United States has a law. Um, It started in Washington state with the Lifestead law, um, which basically prevents a child from returning to play after a concussion until they've been cleared by a medical professional. And it's really to prevent second impact syndrome that I did not know that. And I just rolled my eyes and signed that (laughs) when my kids were doing sports. And now I'm glad I did. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, What are some other things that like, what are some other symptoms of concussion that people might not be aware of? I mean, I think headache, yes. Sleepiness, maybe screens. Okay. Like what are, what are some other ones? Yeah, the common, so the common ones, the headaches, dizziness is a pretty common Mm -hmm. one, Mm -hmm. difficulty concentrating, some people report problems with memory, Um, fatigue is another one, poor sleep, uh, impaired mood. Um, So, and, you know, it's one of those chicken or egg questions with the mood, is the mood related to the concussion? Or is it because of, you know, because of the concussion, then they're not doing the activities that they want to be doing. And then therefore, they have symptoms of depression or anxiety. And Mm -hmm. it's not really clear Mm -hmm. why, but those are some of the other symptoms that we commonly see with concussion. And how soon after a concussion should people see their doctor. And again, like if, if we take, I mean, the first line of defense is going to be the pediatrician yeah. do, or maybe not like what's, what's, what's a, what's a reasonable course of action child has a concussion yeah. and then what? So I would say seeing their pediatrician within the next few days is reasonable. If it's severe enough, obviously going to the emergency room and being evaluated mm-hmm. Um, and so these are kids who have any sort of mental status change. If they're you know, not as responsive, not as responsive for a longer period of time, um, vomiting, things like that. Those are reasons to really go and get evaluated acutely. Mm-hmm. Um, any sort of neurologic differences like weakness, um, changes in sensation, um, speech and communication, things like that. If anything funny like that is happening, you, you go to the ED, the emergency mm-hmm. department, and you have an initial evaluation. They decide whether or not you need imaging. But for most people, following up with the pediatrician within a couple of days is reasonable. Okay. And then if a concussion is diagnosed, then they come see you? Or how does that work? So it, yeah, so it depends on the pediatrician. And so I do a lot of both acute concussion management as well as management of children who have more prolonged symptoms. Mm -hmm. And so it really depends on the comfort level of the pediatrician, Mm -hmm. uh, whether they're comfortable treating concussion, all of the sort of um, symptoms that come along with it, or if it's something that they say, you know, I'm not up to date on this research. I'm not up to date on what I should be recommending. I'm going to refer to someone who is up to date on all of those things and knows the evidence-based management. And then actually what, what I would add there is as a parent, then that's a question we should be asking the pediatrician, huh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And most pediatricians are really comfortable answering that question. Then they might say, gosh, if you're really worried about it, let's have you go see the specialist in Mm -hmm. concussion Mm -hmm. or, you know, let's try this for a week. And if things aren't getting better, we'll have you go see the specialist for concussion. Mm -hmm. Important part is that you want to manage them appropriately right off the bat, because Mm -hmm. if you're, if you're saying, you know, if you're doing things like sitting in the dark room for a number of weeks, and then you finally go and see someone who does concussion management, then you're in a tougher spot than you were at the very beginning if we had been managing it appropriately appropriately from the get-go. Okay, so what I'm hearing is like five to seven days 
if things aren't getting better and, and we and we go sort of back mm-hmm. to life as tolerated and if things are not getting better then we do second line yeah yeah i think that's reasonable depending on the pediatrician that's if pediatrician says i'm comfortable managing this this is what we're going to try if it's not getting better you know we'll take that next step if it's yeah. a pediatrician who says gosh this is really out of my realm of expertise i want you to see someone then it may be sooner than that yeah and then there's probably severity questions there too right so that is also going to play oh my gosh i have so many more questions but we're going to wrap it there <laughs> <laughs> and we will definitely have you back because I want to definitely circle around to some of the other things that, that, that you treat. if people want to get a hold of you, how do they do that? Um, so you can check out my website, which is www.reach, R-E-A-C-H, peds, P-E-D-S, rehab, R-E-H-A-B.com. Um, or you can call my office. The number is 571-310-2502. So, All right. And I'm Perfect. always happy to chat. We will Providers put that information. Family. <laughs> we'll put that information in the accompanying um, text with us. Callie, thank you so much. It's Great. really thank been a pleasure. You. Absolutely. We'll Thanks so much for having me.